we've defined what a data lake is and what a data warehouse is. Let's look at these in a bit more detail. Recall that we emphasized that the data has to be in a usable condition so that someone can use this data to make decisions. Many times, the raw data is by itself not very useful. We said that raw data gets replicated and stored in a data lake. In order to make the data usable, you will use the extract transform load or ETL pipelines to make the data usable and store this more usable data in a data warehouse. Let's consider what are the key considerations when deciding between different data warehouse options. We need to ask ourselves these questions. The data warehouse is going to definitely serve as a sink. You're going to store data in it. But will the data warehouse be fed by a batch pipeline or by a streaming pipeline? Does a warehouse need to be up to the minute correct? Or is it enough to load data into it once a day or once a week? Will the data warehouse scale to meet my needs? Many cluster-based data warehouses will set per cluster concurrent query limits. Will those query limits cause a problem? Will the cluster size be large enough to store and traverse the data that I have? How is the data organized? How is it cataloged? How is it access controlled? Will you be able to share access to the data to all your stakeholders? What happens if they want to query the data? Who will pay for the querying? Is the warehouse designed for performance? Again, carefully consider concurrent query performance and whether that performance comes out of the box or whether you need to go around creating indexes and tuning the data warehouse. Finally, what level of maintenance is required by your engineering team? Traditional data warehouses are hard to manage and operate. They were designed for a batch paradigm of data analytics and for operational reporting needs. The data in the data warehouse was meant to be used by only a few management folks for reporting purposes. BigQuery is a modern data warehouse that changes this conventional mode of data warehousing. Here we can see some of the key comparisons between a traditional data warehouse and BigQuery. BigQuery provides mechanisms for automated data transfer and powers business applications using technologies like SQL that teams already know and use. This way, everyone has access to data insights. You can create read-only shared data sources that both internal and external users can query and make query results accessible for anyone through user-friendly tools such as Google Sheets, Looker, Tableau, QLake, or Google Data Studio. BigQuery lays the foundation for artificial intelligence. It's possible to train TensorFlow and Google AI platform models directly with data sets stored in BigQuery. And BigQuery ML can be used to build and train machine learning models using simple SQL. Another extended capability is BigQuery GIS, which allows organizations to analyze geographic data in BigQuery. And this is essential to many critical business decisions that revolve around location data. BigQuery also allows organizations to analyze business events real time as they unfold by automatically ingesting data and making it immediately available to query in their data warehouse. This is supported by the ability of BigQuery to ingest hundreds of thousands of rows of data per second, and for petabytes of data to be queried at lightning fast speeds. Due to Google's fully managed serverless infrastructure and globally available network, BigQuery eliminates the work associated with provisioning and maintaining a traditional data warehousing infrastructure. BigQuery also simplifies operations through the use of IAM to control user access to resources 
creating roles and groups, and assigning permissions for running jobs and queries in a project, and also provides automatic data backup and replications. Even though we talked about getting data into BigQuery by running ETL pipelines, there is another option. That is to treat BigQuery as just a query engine and allow it to query the data in the data lake, data in place. For example, you can use BigQuery to directly query database data in Cloud SQL, that is managed relational databases like Postgres, MySQL, and SQL Server. You can also use BigQuery to directly query files and cloud storage, as long as those files are in formats like CSV or Parquet. The real power comes when you can leave your data in place and still join it against other data in the data warehouse. Let's take a look.